Well, good morning, everybody. Let's get through some of the main highlights here over the next couple of weeks by starting off with a look at the last 72 hours of total accumulated precipitation. Of course, we had one system leave New England and then the next low, the cutoff low that's spinning down here through California, delivered quite a bit of moisture into California. But due to mild conditions and the overall position of that shortwave that snuck down here, it's not been delivering a lot of snow. We got some into the Sierra Nevada overall, but this is a year where right now through December, we're really not yet kind of picking up on the full potential of the snow throughout the west. So I just want to show you the snow water equivalent map from NRCS here across the western United States, just kind of looking at what some of these percentages are through this point of the year. Now remember, this compares to the historical averages. So we just kind of get a look at, and we notice that we're still waiting on getting the full kind of influence of winter across the western United States. In fact, many across the country are still saying, when are we going to start to get the full influence of winter? Because December's been pretty mild. We've taken a look at this throughout this week. It's to why it's been so mild. We know that we currently have an El Nino that's peaked, that's helping. We have the subtropical jet stream, which is a part of the El Nino package that's been so powerful. Without a good polar jet, it's going to be hard to get some colder air into North America. It also doesn't help that the coldest air is over Greenland and Alaska right now. So if you bottle up cold air in those two places, you won't get it into the midsection of North America. Now thinking about where this is all going to go, I want to show you the bigger picture of things. Thinking about the long range, when does the pattern turn more toward what we would call winter, like normal winter? I'm going to tell you to probably wait till mid-January. And in mid-January, we're going to see an MJO progression that's going to come out here uh, back into the Indian Ocean. That's going to be the first part, phase one, two, three. We're going to start to see some of the displacement of the deep low that's been over Alaska and Greenland start to move around, which will then redistribute the really warmest air across much of the Northern Hemisphere, which is now anchored in Russia, where it had been cold, and then here across North America. There is no reservoir of really cold air yet being built up in North America. So we're going to have to be patient. It may be another month before we really tap into something more than just a shot of colder air. So it feels wasted that we see a system like this one right here that's going to be coming with some subtropical jet stream support. It's currently cut off. It's going to move right across the southwest into the central United States and not really be able to tap in to enough cold air to be just a big, big, big snowmaker that we can sometimes get out of these this time of year. But as it stands, we do have flood watches already issued for parts of California and Arizona, and you can see around it some areas of dense fog and still dealing with the flooding issues up the east coast from the previous system that rolled through. What it looks like going to the high res NAM, picking this up midday today, there's going to be some rain and some showers that open up ahead of this on some more mild air. This is all coming around um, a high pressure cell that's right in this area. And they're going to keep an eye on this system rolling through Southern California into Arizona tomorrow. Look at that. That's some great moisture tomorrow into Arizona as the system finally reaches its potential coming out of the mountains. Now, I say that with tongue in cheek because the real potential of this would have been if there was brutally cold air across the northern tier of the United States. Instead, there's a little bit of cooler air coming into the northwest, so you can see some of the snow here that's going to be happening in the Cascades in the northern Rockies. But this system, it's got the moisture, just doesn't have the cold conditions. You'll see that as I play for you the two models, the GFS on the left and the European on the right here. Now we can see in both full screen. As I play it forward, there's the pulse of moisture out ahead of it. And then watch the system evolve into the midsection of the country. Now it's the actual interplay between three shortwave troughs that makes this system. And they're all lifting, they're all pulling toward the north rather than digging. If they dug in, we'd be talking about big, big snows, we'd be talking about much colder air, we'd be talking about more risk of severe weather. But this is just lifting out of the four corner states. The models are completely different in the timing of those troughs. The GFS is much slower than the European, forgive me, the GFS is much faster than the European, which is what I'm pointing at over here. And the European lingers, delivers more snow to parts of North Dakota, South Dakota, even into Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, puts down more rain there as well. And it just lets it sit here and spin, whereas the GFS yanks it out all the way by next Thursday. There's another wave coming into the northwest at that time as well. So if we just take a look at the next seven days of total accumulated precip, that's what the European model solution looks like. Now here's the GFS. Now watch this area right here. The GFS is much wetter into here. A comparison whoops, between the two again. And if you want to look at the actual differences, they look like this. So I see my eyes, of course, drawn to British Columbia, but just take a look at the Northwest. Take a look at the Central U.S. That's where the European is wetter. These colors are wetter European. The GFS is wetter in parts of the Mid-South, which desperately need the GFS to be right. This has been an area that's been very, very dry as of late. 
On the snowy side of it, though, well, actually, let's start with the ice side of this. Beginning on Sunday, going through Monday and Tuesday. Yep, that's our very busy travel time period. If the European solution is correct, watch this corridor for the risk of some ice. Watch it very carefully. I'll bring up uh, this again tomorrow. But on the snowy side of it, major difference in the solutions. There's the European through seven days, and here's the GFS. So it's all about the speed and timing of those short wave troughs, keeping the system lingering here in the European, racing it off to the east in the GFS. On the probability side of it, this is what it looks like to get uh, the best chance of an inch of snow between now and Sunday, and uh, next Sunday, excuse me, the 31st. And uh, what you can see here is that it's mostly going to be confined to the plains and pockets of New England and in the mountains out west. Uh, if we flip this over to probability on the precip side, who's wettest, here's the best chance of getting an inch of rainfall over that time period. Now what I love about this is that that moisture coming into this area is hitting some very dry states right in through here. And on top of that, the soil temps are going to be up in the 50s on Sunday, meaning we're going to be able to keep the soil unfrozen, bring in the rain, it'll soak. That's what I really want to see. After that, the jet stream does its full extension from the Sahara all the way to here. <laughs> and as it does that, I just want you to take note, this is all subtropical jet. There's no strong polar piece to this. In fact, the jet stream splits across North America, gives you that northwest flow, and that's why the day 8 through 10 forecast looks something like this. And I buy into this. The GFS looks the same. The European looks the same. Subtropical jet stream influence, northwest flow on the split part of the jet stream, and that's why we get drier into this area. On the temperature side of it, I was already at the end of that. Let's go back to the beginning. Here's today's high temperatures into tomorrow, getting into Saturday, Christmas Eve, I mean, we have a huge section of the country here that's 27 to 33 degrees above average. And then you go into Christmas Day, the colder air is wrapping around the backside for the snow that's going to be happening in the Western Plains. And then we get into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Quite mild conditions overall. And that just seems to be the way it's going to go. Without a good breakaway from the troughs over Greenland, where the polar vortex is also sitting, or Alaska, with the tropospheric vortex is sitting, we don't get a good chance at displacing this very mild air. So who's cooler as we start the new year? Is it going to be mainly the south where the subtropical jet is? That's very typical of an El Nino. By the way, this El Nino has peaked. It is just kind of steady eddy right now, and we expect it to start to fade at some point, maybe beginning in February. All right, South America to finish this up. Look at that. That's what needed to happen to get the flow to come back. And the models have trended a bit wetter. Take a look. Here is the European model solution for the next 15 days. The drier areas are up in the Amazon. This whole region in here has maintained its wetter bias in that forecast. And when I say it's trended wetter, I'm talking about the GFS, which has expanded this area in the latest run to include more precipitation across some key growing areas. Now, if this rain comes through, it could be beneficial to the crop. What I am worried about is if it doesn't stop after that. That could really start to mess with harvest, which begins in earnest in uh, January and February. So now we're going to flip this script over and say the new risk is if the rain does come back and doesn't quit. So we'll keep you up to date on that. One more video before I take some time off between Christmas and New Year's. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Thanks.